Hi everyone, Peter Lisiaga here in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I'm at Donato Karate Center and I'm with my friend Ryan Matthews and we're going to chat a little bit and share a little bit about our experience when it comes to personal safety and crime prevention. Now, Mr. Matthews, tell everyone a little bit about who you are. I'm a police officer in Burlington County. I've been an officer since 1996. Wow. I thought it'd be great that we come together and share our experience when it comes to personal safety because I teach martial arts but I also teach self-defense and of course Mr. Matthews in law enforcement has some ex ex a lot of experience and a lot of input on what we can do and so we decided to do this video and share it with the community so if you do have any questions go ahead and add questions to the comment section below if you have any comments anything anything you want to share links information that has to do with personal safety and crime prevention uh, please let us know is I wanted to just give a definition crime prevention is this it's very simple very easy it is the attempt to reduce or deter crime or criminals very simple right keep it easy that's easy keep right it. okay good and I know I'm sure we can expound on that but let's keep it simple <laughs> okay safety is this is the condition of being protected from harm or other non desirable outcomes safety Absolutely. Very plain and simple, okay? Keeping it simple, keeping it brief. Now, personal safety refers not only to physical safety, freedom from physical harm, but also to psychological safety, which involves freedom from worry about physical safety as well as being victimized by hostility, aggression, and harassment. We're going to just basically have a broad conversation about this. When we come together, we talk a lot about personal safety. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about personal individuals, and then we're going to also talk about small business and what small businesses Very can do. Because I definitely want you to share some of the things that uh, you shared with me. Absolutely. That was ex extremely important. So let me just go through the list of things that we will talk about. Again, in a broad sense, we definitely, this is not going to be an exhaustive uh, um, <laughs> dissertation on, you know, on crime and crime prevention. We're just going to give you an overview, give you some information and some things to think about and some things to do, th things that you can simply do. We're going to go right into number one priority, what the number one priority is and what you can do for yourself and then we're going to talk about emergency numbers and local non-emergency numbers and then we're going to talk about also you know, not only what you can do as an individual, what small businesses can do. So the first thing, what would, what would you say is number one priority? Number one priority is get back home. Get back home. Whatever you're doing, if you're going to work right. and you're doing it in a, an office job, right. come home at the end of your job. Our number one rules as officers are come home at the end of your shift. That's number one rule. Number one. And, and from the day one of the academy till the day you retire as an officer, come home at the end of your shift is priority number one. Yeah, it's interesting because this week we're talking to our students about uh, not sweating the small stuff. And in the course of our day, I'm telling your students this, that you have these big things you have to get done in the day. You have your mission for your day, whether it's uh, your work or your school, but you have things that you've got to get done. You get up in the morning, you get your breakfast, you get, you get ready to get out the door, and then your goal is to get everything done and then get home to your family safely. Absolutely. And so that's the number one priority and we both agreed on that. Yes. Number one priority. As a parent, as parents we want our kids to get home safe. We want to know they're going to an environment that's safe, that they're going to be safe, uh, accomplish their missions yes. and then get home. Yes. I like that. So that's, that's the number one priority. First thing we said is what, what's your number one rule as a parent, as an instructor, as a martial artist is come home. And, and it's the same on our side. That's pretty much everybody's rule right. across the board. That's your number one goal is every person in the world wants to get back home. You know, and, that, and that's important because when you start your day off with your goal, you know no matter what goes on in the day, you keep that locked in your yes. mind because then when you're confronted with a situation, it helps to yes. not get emotional. Exactly. You know, because you know your mission is, is to get home safe. Yes. You know, and how many times, how, that kind of mindset, that's helped you. I do it on my way to work. As I'm driving to work, I can have a list of, I got these reports, I got this going on, I got this, Sarge wants that, Lieutenant needs this, Chief wants this, and what I need at home on top of all that. Five minutes before I pull into the parking lot at work, everything shuts off, and my, I just say, I'm coming home at the end of my shift. Mm -hmm. And everything else will fall into place at that. That seems, that's the only thing you can do, because if you worry about every, everything that goes on everywhere, you'll never get anything done. You'd sit in a ball, curled up in your room in a dark closet, and never do anything. Yeah, and, th and then your decisions are based on fear. They're fear-based, yes. which you cannot think clearly right. with a fear-based mindset. Absolutely. Yeah, you have to, especially on my side of it, that I don't have the option. You know, right. we, we don't, you know, I can't turn around and call the police. 
right. you call 911 because something bad is happening. Right. I'm the one that's showing up. I don't have the option of turning around. Can I call 911 and have somebody else come because I don't want right. to be here? You know, that's just something that comes with it, and we just learned to deal with that part of it and then fix the problem. And then once it's once the problem gets fixed, take that breath and okay, what just happened? Right. It's a it's a fine line. It's hard at sometimes, but most of the time, most of the officers I know, we we just do it. it mm -hmm. You go in, you do it, you fix the problem, and then you realize, oh, okay, that's how I did it. But everybody comes home, and that's it's, the it's a one discipline. Rule. Absolutely, it's a discipline. Absolutely. That brings us to this this idea with the individual. It always starts with an individual. And now we're going to talk about small businesses and big businesses as well, groups, organizations, youth groups, everyone out there. But it starts with the individual. Yes. So let's go right into the what can someone do for themselves? What are some things you believe uh, from your experience? The number one thing, and we've said it, we made the jokes about it, is common sense. You know, a lot of times you hear the joke, if it was on sale, people wouldn't go to the store and buy it. Common sense is the biggest thing. If you feel something, at the back, the hair on the back of your neck stands up for some reason, there's a reason why. Your body is telling you this is a problem. Right. You know, not saying you have to immediately react to it right. and go straight into a jump into the action plan, but if you're feeling it, take that half a second. There's a reason why your body is telling you this. Mm -hmm. you know? right, right. And, and again, just kind of Every once in a while, I know we all love our phones, everybody's on them, we're using one now right, for this, right. but every once in a while, pull your head out of your phone right. and look around and see what's going on around you and just kind of have an idea of where you're at. Right. You know, that, that, even when you're driving, right. every once in a while, look up and just say out a street name which one you're on. I'm right. on this street, I'm passing this street. So God forbid if something did happen and you had to call to get a, a 911 or emergency, you're not telling the dis opt or dispatcher, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You, you at least have an idea, I just passed this intersection, right. I'm in this area. Right. So if it's not the police department you're calling, they'll know who to get you to, to right. get you the help that you need. And you mentioned it when we when you first came in, uh, and it's on our bookmarkers, mm -hmm. you know, awareness. Yes, absolutely. Become a master of awareness. I tell this to anyone that takes martial arts, that if you want to become a master in anything, you know, Become a master of awareness, and this is what yeah. you're talking about: Absolutely. being aware, a high level of awareness. And it does take practice, yes. but it's easy to do. Oh, it, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost. It's free. free. You know, there's only thing. There's no app on your phone for it. You just have to use your own brain app. Right, that's, right. That's the easiest way. To I love do it. it. I Absolutely. Love it. Just so awareness, be aware. awareness, and then also. Uh, Next thing here, we're talking about awareness, also assessing. So you're talking about knowing the streets, knowing uh, businesses or, let's say, key places that yes. you're going by Land, that you're in. Something that can help us get to you as fast as we can. Right. You know, right. That, and that's really what it comes down to. I'm aware. I'm awareness. I'm driving around. Oh, I see a problem. Right. I can't jump out of my car and fix it. Right. But I know who can. You call the 911. But... If you don't tell us where we're going, right, we can't get there in time right. to fix the problem. So, being aware, like I said, if you don't, you don't have to know exact landmark, you know, the, the Latin longs of where you're at. But at least I just passed. If we're in Mount Laurel, if you're on, I just passed prospectors. I'm in the area right. of stores or a great landmark. Right, right. You know, certainly, you know, I just passed the Aldi. I just, pa I'm in the shopping center near yeah. the, the, the DKC. Okay, we know where you're at, right, and we can figure out how to get there mm -hmm. depending on the situation, right. which way we need to respond mm -hmm. to keep ourselves aware, keep ourselves safe, and be able to fix that problem. Yeah, these skills are not all uh, they're extremely valuable when it comes to non-escalation -esc of mindset. Absolutely. In other words, you know, these are things you can do so that nothing does happen. So if you go into an environment wherever you're going, first of all, know where you're going. When you get there, uh, look at the environment. When you're going into a space, you know. Look at the exits. Absolutely. Look at the you know the layout of the environment. Yes. Look at the people in the environment. Be aware. Sometimes, Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Sometimes if you walk in a store, you know if you walk in, your head's down, yeah. you're in your phone, and there's somebody in there. To, even if it's something little like a shoplifting, they're not worrying about you. But if you're up and you're kind of you're mm -hmm. looking around, that person may not steal just because you made eye contact. So right. you may not even know that it happened, but that person didn't steal. That the the shop owner didn't lose merchandise. Right. He doesn't have to raise prices for the next time you come in to pay for the product that was stolen, right. to help reproduce, to pay for the security systems and all this, so prices yeah. stay down. So making eye contact and just having that presence, you know, don't right. walk in shoulders down, head down, mousy. You don't have to walk in, you know, kick the door That's in and go what? in like, like a Wild West saloon, but if yeah. you walk in with a presence that I'm here, right. 
it could deter a lot of stuff. It's funny, too, growing up in New York, uh, a lot of people, especially females, they would put headset on, and they, they thought at one time that they ignored everyone, never that that would be helpful. And they learned very, very fast that Absolutely. was not the case. Now that singles them out as an easy pick. Easy target. Why? Absolutely. Because they lack awareness, yeah. and they possibly lack confidence. Absolutely. And that they're an easy target. Yes. So be aware and always know what's going on and who's around you. And next thing is basically uh, just improving your ability to move to action. Because once you are aware of a situation mm -hmm. and you've assessed it and you've uh, you've realized that gosh, this is a dangerous situation, mm -hmm. you know, what do I do? Right. And so I think that's really extremely important. It's on the bookmarker. Yes. And I put that as a top three. Absolutely. You know, was, like we talk about. How's your A game? Exactly. Oh, that's a great. I love that. That is that is literally it because everybody can think that, and it's that quick little three right. checks. And again, the same thing. Like I said, when I pull up to work, I say it. Same thing. You're right. sitting at the red light. You can just say that in your head. Boom. How's my A game? And if you're it, if you are zoning in your phone or getting in your own head, not paying attention to anything, just say that little sentence, and right. it could snap you out of it enough to where you won't become that victim as fast. Right. 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 And I, I think that many of us are concerned that when it comes to a situation where we got to defend ourselves, like first of all, the first thing you do is get out, right? Absolutely. Get out, Absolutely. see a situation, get out. However, I know some people uh, don't move very well. I mean, I, you know, I run as part of my training to stay active, as part of your training to stay active. You want to know you're able to move to action when you Absolutely. have to move to action. Yeah. And I want to uh, just remind everyone to do that, to, to get fit, to, to know, hey, look, you don't have to run an eight minute mile, let alone a four minute mile, <laughs> but, uh, how fast can you run and how long can you do it? Right. If you go 15 minutes a mile, 30 minutes a mile, but can you do that, let's say, indefinitely? Right, right. <laughs> you know, but you want to know what your physical uh, challenges are and capabilities are. And at the same time, you want to make sure that uh, you train yourself, stay fit, eat healthy, all those things that we ought to do anyway. And but, with that same thing, if your plan is to run, make sure you're able to. Right. Like if you're locked into a small area, yeah, you could run right. for you could run cross country and go for days, but if you only have a ten foot space, right, your running is not going to help. So right. also keep that in mind. What other options do I have? Yeah, that's part of knowing your environment. Absolutely, like where the exits yeah. are. Everything I mean, do it on coming. the airplane. Yes, and but when you get into any environment, yes, where are the exits mm -hmm. and what are the obstacles? Yes. Okay, if I need to get out and role play it. Absolutely. If I need to get out, okay, this is what I'm going to do. If somebody comes that direction, I have an obstacle here. I go around this way and I go that way. Yes. And I know in the school, in our karate school, we have an exit at the front yes. and then one in the back. Yes. And we'll tell the kids, there's an exit there, so if something happens over there, you go to the Dude. back exit. Absolutely. So when you go into an environment, know the environment enough yes. and then know how you can move and know that you can move Absolutely. through those. Whether yeah. you may, may have to go over things around things and even under things. Absolutely. Can you do it? 100%. Exactly. That's if the only way is under yeah. and it's a small hole and yeah. we're big, we ain't going to fit. Okay, we got to have a plan sounds B. Sounds like sounds like a burpee challenge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. A burpee <laughs> challenge. Do the dive bomber push-ups to get up and out exactly. and under. I love it. I love it. I love it. Out, so, over, under, or through. What, right. what do you got to do? I mean, but, yeah, or yeah. do you even have to do anything? Right. And that's the other thing, you know, like we're saying too, the martial arts is a great thing, but if I'm not a fighter and I can't fight and I right. can't run and I can't, maybe at that point I just need to use my phone. Right. So play out everything. Exactly. And if it is a bigger scenario with a lot of people, don't be the odd man out. If everybody in that room is crying, if something bad right. is happening, right. you cry. Right, right, right. You don't want to be the odd man out and have that, that bad guy look at you and single you out for whatever reason. Right, so if right. everybody's laughing, you laugh. Everybody's right. crying, you cry. Well, let, let, let's, down, let's, you know? let's pause on that yep. a second because that's, that's huge. You're talking that if you're in an environment and there's a situation happening and there's a bad guy in this environment yeah. and uh, there's maybe 10 of you guys, uh, you there, mm -hmm. and the group is expressing a certain level of emotion, yes. that you model that absolutely, and join in with that because that keeps you from standing out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, even as a police officer, the same thing. Whether I have an off-duty weapon that I don't, if I'm planning my plan of action, if everybody in that room is crying, I'm going to make some tears real quick because wow. again, I want to. I don't want to be the one that now he locks into, or they lock right. into, and they're standing. That takes away my advantage of when right. I need to act. Right. What am I planning to do? Right. And you don't want to be separated from that. If I'm the only one that there that might be able to help this situation, and I'm not crying and I'm right. not doing everything else, if they take me and put me somewhere else, now I just jeopardize everybody else in that place. So right. I took right. myself out of an action. I have no point now. I have wow. to redo everything. Right. So kind of go with the flow with that and. Wow. Don't be a hero. I hate to say it that way. Right. Everybody sees the movies. Everybody wants to be the person on the front page right, of the newspapers. Right. 
No, follow, you know, yeah. stay with the group. And yeah. that's your best. Again, number one priority is what? Myself, you know, yeah. It was weird. It's, it's weird saying it, me, right? Because when on you know, work related, it's you, you know, right? You, you, you guys, whatever they need. But in the back of my head, I'm still coming home too. So right. it's weird when I say me. It, it, it kind of right, threw right, me right, for that right. a little bit. But no, but there's skill the, sets that you have, skill sets that I have, absolutely. that we we uh, we can help a situation. Yes. And but what's important with what you say is that you help it, really help it by not. Uh, um, standing out. Absolutely. You're not standing out. If you out. were to jump up, let's say you you had a sweatshirt over right, your knee, right. same scenario, a lot of people, and you jump up and you jump into a right. good fighter stance. Right. Well, again, if I'm making yes. my game plan now, you just made it worse for me yeah, because every, it's look. everybody's looking at you. Yeah. Now they could be worrying about you seeing the black belt saying, oh no, they weren't expecting yes. that. That throws them out of their mindset. Right. They just want to run in, get and go. That's gotcha. their goal. Yeah, but yeah. now you just change the game, right? And it could make it a hundred percent worse by you. Wow. By you just doing something like I said, as simple yeah. as not crying. Well, why right. is he not crying? Why is he not acting? Right, what is right. wrong? And now they're thinking, and right. and they're getting nervous. And nervous right. is never good in a bad situation. That, uh, let's talk about uh, emergency, non-emergency numbers. Yes. Obviously, this situation we're talking about right now is an, this an is emergency nine one one number. Right. And another thing that you mentioned that was an aha moment for me was this idea of non-emergency yes. numbers. Yes. I really want the community to know about this because the question right now, I want to ask you guys a question out there. Do you know your non-emergency number? If you live in Mount Laurel, what's the non-emergency number? If you live in, oh, let's say, Willingboro, what's the number there? Burlington, Camden, you know, Philadelphia, what's the non-emergency number there? Now explain the difference between the two. In Burlington County, uh, every department is dispatched through Central, which is out in West Hampton. Every department has a non-emergency number, and we have 911. So if you were, uh, hypothetical, you're, you're teaching a class, the kids right. are skateboarding in front of the building, you've gone out twice, stop guys, come on, knock it off, knock it off. It, it, they're not listening, but you need now you need an officer presence to have them stop. Most people are like, oh, I'm not calling 911, and mm. they, they feel weird about it. If you were to call that non-emergency number, Central is going to answer the phone and say, Mount Laurel Police Department, how may I help you? Right. Hey, I'm over at wow. the uh, Donato Karate Center. I got a couple of kids skateboarding, blah, 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 blah. Okay, no right. problem. And they can have an officer respond. At the same time, now, if that kid were to pick up a skateboard and start smashing out the windows of the businesses, right. don't hang up and call 911. Stay with that person because they're already relaying to our radio what's going on, descriptions, everything. They may transfer you, but in the meantime, we've already got most of that information and it cuts down the call time from a response from three to four minutes by the time the phone call comes in to we're already rolling. So we right. already got cars heading that way to change it. And that's what the non-emergency number basically could be. Your neighbor's leaving the trash cans out on the wrong day. Um, you have a question that you need to answer, but it's not that 911 emergency. And a lot of people just, well, somebody else will call. And that, that's usually not the best. I know some of my officer friends are gonna be like, dude, why are you just making our calls go up? But no, it is, it's important, we need that. Right. Because that simple little thing Maybe like we had discussed earlier, the small right. piece of that giant puzzle. But right. your non-emergency numbers are also good. You can have them programmed into your phone. So if you are going down the road and you see an accident, and even if you're not in Mount Laurel, let's say that you're you're heading on 73 and you see something to happen, right. instead of trying to Google what town am I in, where am I at, you call that non-emergency number and explain to them, I'm 73 at this intersection. Like right. you said, where am I at? They can say, Oh, that's not Mount Laurel. That's Evesham. Hold right. on one second, right. and they can just transfer you nice. to the next cubicle over. And then you're getting the help. It's a great system. Quick. Absolutely, it works. Great it works great. Yeah, I want to back up a little bit because mm -hmm. you said something. Then I don't want to just go over it because it's very, very important. And for me, it was another aha moment that you had mentioned. That little thing that if you use the non-emergency number, you see something happening, and you think, oh, it's not that important, but it's not right, and you call that non-emergency number, that might be the piece yes. of a big puzzle that you're trying to Absolutely. solve. Absolutely. We could be something as simple as you see kids doing something and we call, we come, we talk to them. Now we find out that those are the same kids that are, or adults, whoever, that are creating other problems and causing other crimes. And right. again, like a, a giant picture, a giant jigsaw puzzle, Yeah. your one call right. that might be, I don't know if I want to call that hesitant moment, right. might be the piece that my department would need, that the two other departments could need that could help Drop the crime rate in right. Wellington County by ten percent just by that one phone call. Wow, wow, you know. and that's huge. That's oh, yeah, huge. Absolutely. And I just want to encourage everyone: please know the non-emergency numbers, yes. use them, be aware, assess the situation, and then your action might simply be to call that non-emergency numbers. Right. It's a big help. So I thought that was important. Yes. 
Let's talk about small businesses. Okay. I go through. I go to small businesses all the time. I partnered up with a few of them, and we're just working together. And a lot of times we get into the conversation about crime prevention. What can they do? And let's talk about that. Now, again, we're not going to get exhaustive on this yeah. because it's a lot that you can do. If you want more information, please contact us and uh, Mr. Matthews as well. But uh, give us some insight in crime prevention for small businesses. Go. Like I said, make the joke, go cheap and easy, free first. It's always easier. It usually seems to work and right. people will do it. Right. Um, simple things. If you have a list of people that you're employees and if the alarm goes off at 3 in the morning, every department has an emergency contact list. Contact your local police department. Some of them are online. Some of them are physical forms you fill out. But update that list. So right. you know, if the alarm were to go off here at 3 in the morning, if Master Donato is not coming out of bed but right. he's saying, oh, Master Luciaga, you got it this week, your number would be on that list so they right. would call and mm -hmm. then be able to get somebody out because if the window is busted and we call that list and it's it's way back from and none of the instructors are here we have nobody to get in touch with so mm -hmm. now we got to try to figure out what do we need to do to protect the rest of your property is something missing we don't know is it just right. a window we we go in and look but every officer is not in every store we don't know what is missing we don't know if you had a safe if you right. had this, that. so have an emergency updated emergency contact list if somebody leaves or right. if somebody gets promoted and they're not coming in at three in the morning and the next low man is update that list so we right. have somebody that can come out yeah I think it looks like that I think number one would be to connect with the uh, law enforcement absolutely law enforcement. absolutely and just follow your local town's protocol for that whether it's you know we need one number and right. then you know we're calling you and it's your job to call the rest or However, the local town has it set up. Just it, they work really well because they're central. Again, that central okay. dispatch will make them phone calls for us. We'll be out front, central. I need a uh, right. emergency contact for this business, please. And I don't know how many times it's happened. It happened recently. I've got ten names on the list. Nobody works there anymore. Wow. And, and now, now again, the business is out. The window's busted. We're trying to stay there and try to keep anyone else from coming in. And now we got to try to figure out what can we do. Right. You know, do we have to call? somebody out to come board up the window that they doing it to the alarm and then even with your alarm company if you tell the alarm company hey here's my emergency contact most of the time some a lot of the times I find they don't even have the right list they wow. might have an old list so update it with your local and if you have an alarm system right update it with them right. too right. so they can call because with right. the alarms they'll right. try to call too but yeah. they run into yeah, stay connected stay absolutely. absolutely now absolutely. with that being that's definitely I think on top of the list mm -hmm. top three things that come off the top of your head that uh, small businesses can do Emergency contact list, number one, have it there. Um, if you have an alarm system, right. know how to work it. Know if how to you, work the alarm exactly. system. If you, if you spend thousands of dollars on a great video system, high def, night vision, everything you can imagine, but if you don't know how to work it and we show up and there's a problem and we got to wait two or three days for somebody to right. show us how to rewind it, you know, I'm not saying as a businessman you have to trust mm -hmm. and do everything, but if you have other one or two other employees that at least know how to save the video and can rewind it mm -hmm. and let us watch it while we're there, right? That could that that could be great. That could be awesome. You know, right. and and along with the systems like that, work with your businesses next to you. So if oh, that's a, huge. If yeah. it's a huge, huge, if it's a that's thousands big. of dollars for an alarm system, but if you have this video system, if you're in a strip mall like we are here. Work with your neighbor next to you, so maybe they have a camera that kind of takes half of yours. You take half of theirs. It covers the backs, the fronts. If somebody does come by, we because what we'll do is we'll check every business who has a camera faces where, and we'll try to watch all those cameras yeah. to see if the car right. parked here, there to help with that. Right. Um, yeah. So the emergency contact list have the um, know your system. if you know your system absolutely, and partner up. Partner up with that. And the other thing is, again, common sense, a game. If you have a business that yeah. has a lot of cash flow. Vary your routes to the bank. If you're making drop-offs to the right. bank, don't take the same road the same time. Right. Everything, because again, like we've all seen Home Alone when Joe Pesci's sitting in the van yes. and he points to the windows. Like bad guys will do that. They will right. do their homework. Change the routes. Right. You know? And if you are walking it to the car again, like we've discussed a little bit ago, if you have the big bank bags, have one filled with Monopoly money or newspaper right. shreds. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a big visual target for somebody to lock into, and you might have the money in in a in a in a lunchbox. Or something right. else that's something not as important. A suspect or a bad guy sees that big bank bag, that's their target. They snatch and run. Okay, fine. You jump in your car, you lock the doors, you call 911, and you say, he's running this way. And you describe, he's got a TD bank bank bag tucked under his arm like a football. He's running toward Route 38. Okay, mm. we, we just catch that guy. It, it mm. works out a lot easier. And you don't lose anything. So right. you cut down your victim time. That's the other big point. Cut down your victim time. Be a victim for a minute, not 
days, weeks, months, weeks, years, and how. You know, right, cut that right. down as fast as you can. Well, that's great. Again, it's just an overview, everyone, and uh, um, wow, it's a lot. I know we every time we come together, there's something yeah, else that more comes that we'll more think of more. more. If you thought of anything, guys, just add your comments, and I'll look later on any comments there again. And I'm looking forward to your questions, your comments. There's so many things that we can talk about, and, uh, you know, when it comes to even with the families with bullying, a yeah. lot of things there. And and if you want any more information about crime prevention for your small business, let us know right below. I'll connect you with uh, Mr. Matthews. He'll be more than happy to help you guys out. If you want me to come out to share some information very specifically to your organization, uh, you can let me know. And yeah, if you want Mr. Matthews to come out and share his experience and give you some um, key things you can do for your organization, whether you're a small business or a youth group, he's more than happy to do that. Hey, thanks for spending this time. Anything more you want to add? No, I'm, I'm interested in all the comments because every time we sit down, we come yeah. up with a new thing. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, no, oh, no. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the people there come up with something. Well, what about this? We can't do every scenario. We right. can spend the rest of our eternity right. every single scenario. No, but I'm sure that. But we keep will it easy because point. there's, there's again, the A game is I think absolutely the, breaking everything absolutely. down. Those three A's, yes. you know, awareness, assessment, and action yes. are are pregnant with things you can do in every single yes. environment. You become a master of awareness that then sets you up, mm -hmm. you know, in a very in a powerful position Absolutely. in any environment yes. everywhere, no matter where you are yep. in the world. Absolutely. That and then assessment, having the intelligence to look and be aware and then using that common sense. Yes. Okay, and then just being able to move to action, action would be as simply just getting up and getting out. Yes. You know, and then uh, dialing 911 or a non emergency number once you've assessed it. But, yes. uh, um, but thank you so much, no problem, buddy. sir. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. You guys, have a great day. Thanks for spending the time. Talk to you later. See ya.